that is along the uh, charge transport pathway in uh, organic fuel infection systems. Okay, uh, so let's start uh, from uh, OFET. Okay, so here is a top view of uh, OFET device. So we can see there are two electrodes and uh, the conjugate molecules are responsible to transport the charges from the source electrode to the drain electrode. So in order to get high mobility, the conjugate molecules should have a suitable chemical structure and uh, they needed to pack into lattice that give you very nice high, high stacking. And above that, these molecules should form a thin film that has low density of packing defects. Okay, so in order to reach high mobility, uh, so scientists have thinking different ways to uh, remove all these green boundaries so that uh, when the charge is transported, they won't be hindered by these uh, structural defects. So one of the very effective ways to make high uh, performance whole fat is by uh, changing the polycrystalline thin film into the crystal arrays. So technique like uh, solution sharing, deep coating, zone testing, and influences has been uh, developed to produce the crystal array of conjugate molecules. And uh, through this uh, crystal arrays, high charge mobility can be uh, delivered by this kind of device. So inspired by these studies in my lab, we also hope that we can have our own ways to create crystal arrays of conjugate molecules. And uh, as a polymer scientist, uh, trained as a polymer scientist, we know that PDMS is like a solvent sponge. It likes to uh, absorb uh, solutions. So what we think is that, how about let's prepare a PDMS sheet, then adhere it to a silicon uh, wafer. And in this way, we will have this sandwich-like structure. And we purposely make we, our uh, PDMS sheet to have some curvature. So in this way, when we prepare the same structure, we will have a little gap here, allows us to inject the solution of the conjugate molecule. And once you inject the solution of the conjugate molecule into this gap, solvent will be absorbed into the PDMS sheet. And then the solution will start to supersaturate so that nucleation and the crystal growth will happen at this PDMS silicon wafer uh, contact, uh, contact lines. So if you use a uh, optical microscope to see how the crystal grows, this is the video you can see, okay? So you can see that initially uh, the crystal doesn't have very good orientation, but as the crystal grow outward, the lateral direction crystal growth will be limited. So eventually the crystal, uh, the crystalline domains will gradually become parallel to each other. So in this way, we can easily prepare the crystal array of different types of conjugate molecules. Okay, so after we have this technique, we started to study uh, the uh, transistor performances of C60 and also look into how its uh, crystal morphology affect the performances. And here is the crystal array we grow uh, based on our uh, PDMS assisted, uh, assisted crystallization methods. Okay, you can see that because we use PDMS to absorb the solvent and uh, cause supersaturation. So basically we can use solvents with very different blowing point. And uh, no matter what the blowing point of the solvent is, we can always turn the random oriented crystals into well aligned crystal array. And this advantage gives us uh, the ability to study the solvent-induced polymorphism in this semiconducting material, okay? So after we get this crystal array, we put it uh, into TEM to see more detailed morphology. So in this morphology, so you can see uh, crystals grow from different solvent, shows different morphology. And uh, for crystal grow from metaxidine and CS2, you can see this really continuous charge transport channel. But for crystal growth from ODCB, there are more uh, grain boundary. So initially we thought this one probably will give us uh, lower mobility and this could give us higher mobility. But turn out uh, the crystal growth from ODCB give us higher mobility. So in order to know why this is the result, so we further use diffraction, electron diffraction to check the packing structure of these C60s. 
We can follow that in these two crystals, although they grow continuous charge transport channel, but solvent has been incorporated into the crystal structure. So because solvent is uh, insulated, so this solvent becomes a defect for charge transport. This is a reason why these two solvated crystals give lower charge mobility. And uh, fortunately, uh, solvent like CS2 are really uh, volatile. So we can use thermal annealing to remove this solvent. And uh, by monitoring the diffraction pattern, we know that our crystal change from solvated lattice into non solvated lattice. So eventually, we get the highest charge mobility from this non solvated uh, lattice, and also that is a continuous charge transport channel. Okay. So for this part of a uh, result, uh, I hope that I already introduced you the first type of defects you could, you could encounter in your OFET uh, devices. That is, it is possible solvent could be included into the crystal so that it will decrease your device performances. Then after we started C60, we started thinking about, okay, now we know that uh, our method is successful being used for N-type semiconductor. Can we also use our PAC method to grow the crystal array of P-type uh, organic semiconductors? So we started to prepare the crystal array of uh, T-pentacin. And the T-pentacin is a representative uh, P-type uh, small molecule semiconductor. And fortunately, we can get, again, well-aligned crystal array for also T-pentacin. But a very interesting phenomenon has been observed here. Although under POM, the morphology look very similar. But if you look at the performances, you will realize that crystal array grow from high blowing point solvent, give you higher performance with lower standard deviation for the performances. But crystal array grow from low blowing point solvent, then the, their performance is not so good. So this means that there could be some defects included along this charge transport channel. And we really want to know what it is. So we look into the literature. One of the possibility that could decrease the mobility is the polymorphic behavior of pentacin. Professor Dio reported that pentacin can form some kinds of packing that give you really high mobility. But in some kinds of packing, the mobility is really low. So if these two kinds of packing coexist along the charge transport channel, then this one will decrease your device performance. So we think that this could be a reason, but we needed to know whether or not we have this kind of polymorphism in our crystal array. So in this case, we needed to reveal the lattice structure of t pentacin in this crystalline thin film, okay? So in order to do that, we needed to reveal the unicell of t pentacin in a crystal array. And uh, for a unicell, you will have three lattice parameter that is A, B, C, and the three lattice angle, alpha, beta, and gamma. So if we can reveal this, then we can tell that whether or not we have polymorphism. So in order to get this lattice parameter, what we do is first use electron diffraction to reveal the A, B plane of the lattice. In this way, we can resolve the A and the B and the gamma angle. Then we bring with our crystal to a synchrotron radiation center to do the glazing instant X-ray diffraction. So if we shoot X-ray along this direction, we will reveal the BC plane and the alpha angle. Then we can turn our crystal 90 degree so that we shoot X-ray along this direction to reveal the AC plane and the beta angle. Okay, so by uh, deduce lattice parameter from these three diffraction patterns, we can have our lattice parameter being revealed here. And at this point, we realize that polymorphism is not the reason why we see the performance uh, differences because all the crystal array grow from different solvent as the same uh, crystal parameter. So this means that actually the defects could be really tiny and they needed to uh, need a more careful characterization to reveal it. So in order to see it, we do uh, further do electron diffraction. This time we pick up one crystal from our crystal array, put it into TEM, then use electron beam to scan along this crystal. Then we observe diffraction pattern from different area of this crystal. And uh, we see that if we use high blowing point solvent to build crystals, we only 
get one type of diffraction pattern. And this diffraction pattern is generated if your electron beam is shooting along the 102 bar zone of a tip pentas in a crystal. But using the same experiment, if you shoot electron beam along the crystal that is grow from low blowing point solvent, then you will see two types of diffraction pattern. The first diffraction pattern is still from the 102 bar zone, but the second diffraction pattern can only be generated if the electron beam is along the 001 zone of this lattice. So this result tells you that if we use low blowing point solvent to grow the crystals along the charge transport channel, you could have two crystalline uh, domains that are misoriented to each other. So this means that this is a tiny green boundary that cannot be observed even under TM. And in order to uh, know the name of this green boundary, we uh, read the uh, Professor Wright's book. He says that if in a crystals, you have two neighboring crystalline domain that is misoriented by less than 50 degrees, then you can say there is a low angle green boundary. So at this moment, we understand that actually uh, the crystal array grow from the low blowing point solvent give you lower mobility because there is some tiny low angle grain boundary that slow down the charge transport. Okay, so at this moment, uh, I think that the characterization tool revealed a second type of uh, structural defects that could exist in the charge transport channel of OEBT, that is the low angle grain boundary. Okay. And uh, after study this, we are quite uh, satisfied, but at the same time, uh, when we look into uh, organic semiconductors, we found that BA molecules is actually a very big family of material constantly used in like OPV or organic fuel effect transistor. So we also feel interesting about this molecule because compared to C60 and the deep pentasy, you can see that there are many rotatable single bond in the BA molecules. And if you have a rotatable single bond, it means that your molecule will have more conformational freedom. Then this conformational freedom could slow down the crystallization kinetics and uh, could potentially introduce more packing defects in the active thin film. So we're wondering that in the DA system, could there also be some packing defects that affect charge mobility? So we started to look into the suitable system for us to investigate. To investigate. Then we see this paper, it is very interesting because if you look at this two EM molecule, you will see that this one has longer conjugation length. And normally we will see that, uh, we'll think that a molecule with longer conjugation length should give you higher mobility. But in this study, it is opposite. Molecule with longer conjugation length actually give you lower charge mobility. So this is an indication that there could be some kinds of defects that is exist in the active thin film. So we started to look into this system. So in my lab, we synthesized two DM molecules and the only difference is the conjugation length. Then we use our PAC maser. We found out that both molecule can grow into well-oriented crystal array. But no matter how hard we try to optimize the performances of this longer one, we can not get higher mobility than the shorter one. So this is an indication there could be some defects exist in the crystal array. So we started to look into what kind of defects is that along the charge transport channel. And in order to do that, we needed to solve first the packing structure of the conjugate molecule in the crystal array. And uh, we needed to, we cannot use the information from single crystal structure because a uh, molecule normally pack differently when they are in the thin film state. So we have to solve uh, the packing structure of these two molecules in the crystal array by our own uh, methodology. And I already introduced to you that you can use three types of diffraction to reveal the lattice structure. And then to understand the packing uh, structure, the next step is you can put your molecule into this lattice. Then by using a computer simulation, if you can adjust the molecular orientation, then you will generate some simulate diffraction pattern that match with the experimental one. And if these two match each other well, then you can say that, okay, the picking structure is soft. Okay, so by using this method, 
first, what we do is we grow the crystals, then we get uh, two GI XRD pattern and the one electron diffusion pattern to reveal the lattice parameter. Then after doing this, we have this lattice diameters. Uh, then we can put in our molecules, start to rotate it to generate the stimulate electron diffusion pattern. So after uh, many try and errors, we are able to uh, generate simulate pattern that is uh, similar to the experimental one. So this is how we identify the packing structure of these two molecules in a crystal array. And with this result, we found that these two molecules can give mobility because their pi pi stacking direction is all along the charge transport direction. So this is a reasonable result. But it also gives us some difficulty to understand why this one gives you higher mobility, while this one gives you the lower mobility. Because if you compare these two packing structures, the longer one actually gives you more area for high pass stack. So supposedly, this kind of situation should give you higher mobility, but why it gives you lower mobility? Okay, so at this moment, we think that only understand the packing structure is not sufficient to explain why the longer conjugation lens one will give you lower mobility. So we further do the uh, density analysis and uh, so that we can calculate the crystallinity of two type of crystals. And uh, because we have the lattice parameter, we can calculate the theoretical density of the crystal. And uh, we, then we can use uh, experimental to check the experimental density. Then by using these two values, we calculate uh, the crystallinity of the shorter one, we found that the crystallinity is quite high, 98%, but the longer one, the crystallinity is lower. So this allows us to generate these two illustration. It tells you that actually, when you extend the conjugation length of the molecules, you give it more chance to form the amorphous domain. The amorphous domain then becomes a, a barrier for the charge to move smoothly along the charge transport channel. Okay, so with all this analysis, finally we can confirm that uh, molecule with longer conjugation lens uh, contain more rotatable single bond. So it is more difficult for them to crystallize. So in their crystal arrays, they will contain more amorphous domain. Okay, so with all these studies, I hope to share with you the information that is because the crystal of molecule the formation of the crystal of a molecule is driven by a uh, non-covalent interaction. So crystal formed by this type of molecule normally can contain more defects. And uh, by using uh, very careful characterization tools, you can see that there are, those defects could be, uh, for example, uh, solvent molecules or just the misorientation of the crystal domain or the amorphous regimes, okay? So I hope that uh, next time, if you see your device performance is not uh, as you expected, maybe this information can help you to uh, further fine tune your process conditions and uh, help you to improve uh, your device efficiency. And uh, with this study, I also uh, start tried to relate the molecular structure to the packing structure and the uh, crystal morphology. And then now we have published several papers based on the technique we developed and really, we hope to have our understanding about multi-scale structural property relationship for this big group of conjugate molecules. And uh, with that, I would like to thank my uh, department and also my financial support from our Ministry of Science and Technology. And I did a lot of experiment in our National Synchrotron Radiation Center. And so I also hope to thank them and my student. And with that, thank you very much.